Hello friends, this is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to model this uh, coffee table. We, we are going to start to model uh, this coffee table. We are going to do this in three lessons. Uh, what we are going to do is we will use a lot of different techniques that we have learned so far and combine these techniques to create this shape. Uh, I'm going to guide you through which techniques we, we are going to use uh, while modeling this coffee table. Uh, but in general, when you come across to a model like this, at first when you're inexperienced, it's a little bit hard to separate the pieces, define which techniques will, uh, will be suitable for which parts of the uh, model. Uh, but uh, this will pass as you model more and more stuff, as you exercise more and more. And uh, throughout these uh, lessons, we are going to model a lot of different objects, so don't worry about it. For now, let's just start uh, to model this one. Uh, first thing I want you to do is to go to customize unit setup and let's set up our units for this example. I'm going to use centimeters so you can go to display unit scale metric centimeters and you, you can just click on the system unit setup and in here system unit scale will uh, should be equal to one unit equals to one centimeter and hit OK, OK and now you are all set. Uh, the second thing I want you to do is to draw these uh, reference rectangles. Uh, let's do this together. Let's hit F. Uh, this will take us to the front wheel. Let's hit G. This will uh, hide our grid. Uh, now, first rectangle I want to draw is this one. Uh, from the front wheel, I want to draw a rectangle with 74 centimeters by 6 centimeters. So let's draw a, create a random rectangle. And then let's set these to 74 by 6. And uh, to move this to the origin in here, I'm going to hit S. Right click on the snaps and Activate the grid points and the vertex snaps, and then you can just pull this corner to the origin. Okay. And next thing I want to do is to create another one. Let's check the dimensions for this. 15 by 70. Let's set these to 15 by 70 and hit S again and move this to the corner. And the third rectangle will be this one in here. Okay. And it's uh, 18 by 45. I'm going to hit L this time for the to go to the left wheel and create one more rectangle. And let's set the dimensions to uh, 18 by 45. Okay. Now let's move this one to this corner as well. Now I can just get rid of this. And this is our reference uh, splines, the reference shape, let's say. And I'm going to start by modeling this feet in here, okay? Uh, and I'm going to just create this part and then I'm going to create these copies. For uh, this lesson, we are going to end it there. So let's hit F again and try to create this shape in here. Now, uh, we are going to do this with lathe. I, I guess most of you have guessed this. And let's break this down. Uh, if I create a line like this, for example, let's try something random and apply a lathe modifier you can see that we have something like this so if this shape creates this uh, lathe this uh, 360 shape then what i need to do is to draw the edge shape of this right so let's try to do that let's hit f again let's hit, uh, select the line and start from here i'm going to start like this Hold shift, just come down a little bit and create this like outgoing shape or concave shape in here. I've done this and now I'm trying to create this one, a more sharp one in here. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not creating the round uh, corners yet, uh, I'll do that later on. And then a shorter but sharper one in here. And then something like this. And I'm going to go out and down and just go down. And now we have a shape like this. Let's apply the lathe and see what happens in here. Now, when you apply the lathe right away, it will create the uh, rotation axis or the lathe axis uh, just at the center point of this spline. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the axis and then move it to the left. And if you see a dark shape like this, then I recommend you to flip normals because it uh, this means that the 
outer faces of the shape is looking inward. Uh, we, we want it reversed. So uh, I'll just click on the flip normals button. Uh, let's move this uh, to the left a little bit more and then move the whole shape to right. Uh, if you click on the axis once again, by the way, shortcut for this is one. So you can just click uh, hit one from the keyboard and go to axis, hit one again to get out of the sub-object mode. Uh, by the way, uh, this is very beautiful about spline modeling technique. You don't need to create the shapes uh, at first try. You can iterate it. Actually, it's, uh, I guess, uh, in whole 3D modeling, the motto should be this. You just create a basic shape, a something that looks like the uh, thing you want to do. Then you iterate it to make it look more like what you want to do, okay? So first, just create a basic shape. Just try to figure out a rule uh, of how, mo how to model uh, the shape and then play with the base shape. Let's go back to line, for example. And if I click on uh, show end result, then you can see what the end result will look like as well. And then you can go to the vertex mode and play with these. And you can see that the end result changes. So if I just, for example, change this to vertex to a Bezier vertex, then I can just play with this and try to mimic this shape in here, okay? And then let's fillet this, for example. This this looks more like a fillet, so I'm going to fillet this. Uh, you can you will see that different techniques or different uh, things, like Bezier, for example, looks a little bit different. Fillet looks a little bit different. Just try to figure out which of these commands create which of these shapes. So uh, if you can do that, then you will be able to uh, see a shape and just go, uh, just guess which commands to use. That's very crucial. So let's change this type to a Bezier as well. I'm going to just pull this out a little bit more. And let's give a little bit of a distance in here. Maybe pull this in a little bit, pull this up. And I'm going to go back and see the shape, check if it looks like this one. Uh, what I see is this is a little bit narrower and a little bit longer, I guess. So I can just play with these. Uh, and this should be a little bit sharper, like this. Okay. And uh, when you're finished, don't forget to fill it or smooth all the corners because actually I'm going to show you a, a different method for doing this. Let's, let's skip this for now. Let's leave them as corners. Okay, I guess this is a little bit thinner. Okay, let's leave it like this then. Uh, I'm going to go to the perspective view and uh, check if fits it or not. I guess it looks close enough. You can play with the shape uh, to make it look more like this, uh, of course. Maybe one more detail. This here I didn't like uh, it in my new form. So let's pull these down a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of say, space. And then a uh, beautiful thing is you can use these edit spline tools as well. Like just, uh, let's use refine, for example, refine, click here once to create this vertex and pull this in. And you can see that we have created a different type of shape. Okay. And now it looks a little bit more like this, I guess. Maybe it could uh, look more like this, but whatever. We are not uh, doing this professionally, so uh, let's say that this is uh, close enough. Uh, by the way, this you will f uh, find that this is a kind of a thickness uh, OCD type of thing. You always play with your model. Uh, it never ends. Uh, the iteration never ends, <laughs> actually. Okay, whatever. Now let's create this part in here. Uh, to do that, I'm going to just create a box, a simple box. Hit S for uh, snaps. Uh, hit S again. You can hit S while drawing. As you can see, it will enable and disable the snaps. This is very cool. I use this a lot. And just create this uh, box. Let's set the dimensions to five by five and the uh, height to 80. I'm going to align this to the feet or foot in here and I'm going to disable the Z position. I'm going to use X and Y center to center. And this way it will just sit on the center point of the lathe we just created. Okay, now I'm going to just uh, choose two of these. 
And now uh, to create four legs, uh, I'm going to show you something very cool. Uh, you can use uh, a modifier called Symmetry. Th uh, this one I use really a lot. And uh, let's choose both of these and go to the Modifier tab and choose Symmetry modifier from here. And what you can do is you can go to the mirror uh, axis or mirror sub-object mode of the object, uh, of the Symmetry, and then pull it uh, to the right. If the object disappears, then click on Flip. This will um, change the mirror side of the object. And you can see that we uh, have a symmetrical object to this. Uh, actually, let's say we have created a mirror of this object in here. And the mirror plane is the uh, mirror sub-object mode position in here. Okay. And what uh, I want to do, uh, or where I want to put this, is right in the middle of this segment. So let's uh, go to the snaps again and activate the midpoint. This way, what you can do is you can just grab this and put it in the midpoint of the segment. That, that way it will just sit on this side in here. And one more cool thing I can do is you, we can stack these symmetries uh, together. Let's assign another symmetry and see what I'm talking about. And let's uh, assign this new symmetry. And this time I want to change the axis. I want to make this symmetrical in the y-axis this time. And then I want to go to the mirror again and pull this back. And again, flip. And you can see that we have created a symmetry of this. And then we have created a, a symmetry of both of these. And this way we can use... Actually, there, there's very one very cool thing. And I, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But first, let's hit S and move this to the midpoint as well. Okay. And then I want to just get out of the mirror subject mode. And then I'm going to hit S to disable the snaps. Now, what I want to show you is I not, right now, because we have used symmetry, now we can go to the line, hit 1 to go to the vertex mode, hit F, for example, to go to the front view, and then make a uh, like, let's iterate this, let's change something about it. And then you will see that all the symmetrical objects will also change. So these are connected to each other. 3ds Max tries to keep everything symmetrical with this um, modifier. Okay. So this is very cool. And one last thing we want to do is to apply a chamfer modifier to these because uh, we have some sharp corners and these look not that good, not that great. So what I want to do is I want to go to the lathe sub-object mode. You can hide these symmetries as well, by the way. If you don't want to see them, then you can enable them, uh, whatever uh, you are going to do, after whatever you are going to do. Uh, let's hide them for now. Uh, let's go to the lathe level of the stack. Uh, we are, it, when you choose something, uh, you're on the top level of the stack, and then you can just go down, uh, clicking here. And then I want to add a chamfer modifier at this stage. Okay. Now let's set the minimum angle of the chamfer. Uh, this property in here is if two faces have 20 degrees or more degrees with each other, uh, it says that you need to apply a chamfer in here. So let's increase this because we have a lot of uh, chamfers that we don't want right, right now. Let's increase this to 45, for example. Then you will see that it only applies the chamfer to the corners uh, as it sees or uh, by by this corners mean that two faces that have 45 degrees or more degrees uh, with each other okay so let's decrease the chamfer amount let's set this to zero and just increase it step by step uh, i'm going to just put this to 0.2 for example and you can see that it applies the chamfer let's try that again and zero this out it applies the chamfer to this corner because these two faces have 45, uh, more than 45 degrees um, of angle with each other. So I'm going to just increase this. Try not to pass this segment in here. It's uh, 0 0.08. Okay. Now we have more of a smooth. Uh, let's decrease that a little bit because I want the chamfer at this corner as well. Uh, let's set that to 30. Okay, maybe maybe what I want to do is I want to leave this at 45, but I can go back to line and just apply a custom fillet in here. Because these two faces are a little bit uh, angled with each other, so uh, it may not work uh, in there. And also we have a similar situation in here. 
let's manually fit those corners. Okay. And also I want to apply the same chamfer to the box as well. Let's go to the box uh, sub uh, box level, apply a chamfer and let's set the amount to 0.1 again. And then enable the symmetry modifiers and we have our bottom part done as you can see. Uh, now one more thing we can do is we can hide these uh, reference uh, rectangles. Uh, to do that I'm not going to use right click hide selection because it's a little bit messy over there. If you hide something then when you want to unhide everything unhides. It's a little bit uh, tricky to use it with names so I don't really I'm not really uh, used to hiding objects this way. I, uh, what I do is I choose this create a new layer from here. If you don't have this tab you can right click here and just go ahead and open the layers uh, toolbar and we have our layers toolbar in here. If I create a new layer uh, let's call it ref as reference as in reference and I want to just tick this move selection to the new layer because they are selected they will be automatically moved to the ref layer and this way you, what you can do is you can click in here and hide this hide this layer and all of the objects in that layer will be hidden as well uh, just don't forget to go back to the default layer because whenever you draw a new stuff um, it will it should be in the default layer so let's set our default layer as the uh, base layer uh, or as the selected layer and move this back up in here and this way we have our uh, base for our coffee table. Let's hit Ctrl S and save this and we will continue this in the next lesson. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you found it useful please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.